you are great. I'm well, I'm well. Thanks for having me on your show. It's an absolute pleasure. We actually tried to do this before the event, but your life got so chaotic at that point. Um, I don't crazy. think... <laughs> but it was a good show, though, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You know, the weather was a bit bad. Uh, I mean, you know, I was like quite gutted, uh, you know, especially, uh, I suppose, you know, the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday was looking good. Uh, Thursday even, uh, then the Friday, you know. In fact, on uh, Wednesday, I went in and I met with mall management. I actually called up an emergency meeting and I actually told them, listen, uh, I think I need to, uh, you know, maybe move this uh, event. But, you know, the thing is, it was such a logistical nightmare. Uh, there were some guys that brought cars from uh, KZN, uh, you know, everywhere else. And for them to take cars back, I mean, oh, they weren't going to leave their cars here for a whole another, you know, uh, week. Mm. So, uh, you know, we... We were just hoping for the best, you know, for the weather to change. Look, the weather didn't change, but uh, the good thing is that we still saw quite a bit of people at the shop, and that was the amazing part. And the thing is, when I saw the uh, exhibitors and, uh, you know, the sponsors all pulled together, and when you see their spirit, you can't give up. You know, you just got to go ahead and, and, you know, put the show together, you know. Exactly. Uh, this so People, I mean, there's some people that, and now if I look at it, if I did, uh, you know, postpone it, all those people would have, uh, you know, that actually came out and braved that weather, uh, you know, they, they would have been like uh, quite upset, you know, maybe they had plans for the following week. But you, because I mean, it wasn't like little raining. I was watching the, the videos and I was watching everything unfold from, from my side. You guys had like major flooding and storms and all types of cock. You no, know? it wasn't it. Wasn't it that bad? Okay, well then the video and people posted were made it look way worse than it was. <laughs> what what I, videos? Was I, it, I, the videos? Oh, oh, I can. Oh, I, I remember Saturday morning. I started seeing the content coming through, and I saw the rain. I'm like, shit. and I was like, oh no, man. I mean, I because I knew all the planning that's gone into it and everything, and you know that that's the only scary thing with these things is. Something like rain would kick into it. But like you said, guys wanted the show, you know, and nothing was going to stop them. And I mean, that's you, what was beautiful. I mean, we met, uh, I mean, I think it was, what, uh, maybe a month before the show? Yeah. When you came up to uh, Johannesburg. And I mean, we met and uh, you, I mean, you knew, you've been to a few of our exhibitors mm. uh, and our sponsors. I think you did some, uh, you know, I don't know whether it was a podcast or what for. Them, and the TV but, shows uh, and stuff with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, I mean, you you met with them and everybody was like uh, excited. They were amped, you know, for the show. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, well, I think it was only the weather that, uh, you know, gave us help. But uh, also the logistical nightmare of getting cars down to the basement yeah. and then getting every day because i mean those are very expensive cars yeah and i was like uh you know i was like quite frantic about that you know i was like uh, very I, mean, I had to make sure that those cars were all you know safe and uh, you know nothing would happen especially with the gazebos flying and we made oh. sure in fact i was actually going around to every gazebo making sure and looking at the gazebos whether they were tied down and that because i mean there was some wind there in the, in, in the night. What, what show was that? That was at the last Castle Extreme. I yeah. think it was. And I, I had I had this massive stand that I shared with, with Monster. And there was guys just out, outside parked with us. And then they were wrapping up. I think it was on the Saturday night. And they were pulling their gazebos down. And I'm like, guys, don't pull the gazebos down. Just break them down and put them back up in the morning. I remember this one guy was like, Argh! and I'm like, because everything we did, I mean, I, 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 like I said, my stand with this monster, I mean, we tie shit down, everything, you know, we, we've yeah. been through it. We've, we've lost marquees and everything. And 
the guy's like, ah. Oh. So the next morning we rock up and his gazebo flew into a Supra. Shit. That had like some stupidly expensive paint job on it. That, it, that was actually uh, at the, uh, the last show, which was at the SWAT Corps. SWAT Corps, yeah. SWAT Corps. Like, yeah. That was their last show. When they had it at the Dome, it was like that. Yeah, yeah the Dome was, was cool. indoor. Now the yeah. Dome's gone. Now it belongs to We Buy Cars. Yeah. I, I mean, mean we, I used to exhibit this to you. Yes. Yes. I mean, well, well that's something we had to go into because your background was Max My Ride. Right, I mean, you, yes. you started in publication. Yeah, How did I, now, I mean, I, I knew I, I, I kind of stumbled and fell into SA Hot Rods. Um, but how did you get into Max My Ride? So, cars are always my passion, you know, uh, from the time I was young. Um, you know, I used to draw cars and you know, I should look at all these nice cars, draw it. And, you know, I mean, that was my passion. It was in me, you know. So when I started working and, uh, you know, when I came up to uh, Johannesburg and I started working and, you know, um, I started buying Max Power magazines. You know, remember Max Power magazine yeah. used to be in... Uh, I knew the uh, editor. CNA. Mm. The yeah, local one or international what... one? No, international. Oh, yeah. International. I mean, local oh. only came out in 2007. Uh, right, uh, the or 2006, if I'm not mistaken, mm. uh, the uh, the international one was. I, I love that magazine. You know, that was like our Bible. You know, our car Bible. And uh, every month, without fail, I would go look. And those those magazines were expensive back in the day. Those international magazines. So I used to go, but sometimes I used to actually stand in that CNA, and uh, you know. I don't even think people stand in the CNA and uh, and, and read. Uh, I don't even the think there's a lot of CNAs around, bro. I mean, is there CNAs? I, 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 there are still a few. There are still a few. I, I know most of them have closed down, but I mean, I don't even. Yeah, I don't even see people reading magazines anymore. You know, like when you used to go there, there was at least about like five, six guys standing there and they're all reading and they're going through all these magazines. I mean, I when even when I had Max Murray magazine, I used to go there just to check my magazine on the shelf and I'm sure you also did the same, right? So- No, you, uh, no, no. You I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say this and sorry to Annie, is you would walk into a shop and then you would see Speed and Sound in like a prime spot and you would swap them out for your magazine. You know, and then you would walk out. <laughs> yes, Annie, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and you I probably did the same. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I used to put mine next to them just to say, okay, right, cool. Let's see which ones go first. <laughs> you know? So we say, okay, we got 10 of ours, 10 of theirs. Because at one point, our magazine was really doing well, you know? Um, and uh, it actually became like a household name, also, mm. you know, uh, just like the other magazines. And uh, so when I saw Max Power, I used to go read it and um, I should buy this. And I had a stack of, uh, you know, of these Max Power magazines. And um, I always said to myself, one day, I'd like to own a magazine. That's my dream, you know. And uh, it so happened that in, well, I think in 2006, uh, we started Max Recruitment, myself and my wife. Uh, it's a recruitment company, which we still run up to today. I mean, that's our bread and butter. That's our main, uh, you know, company. And that's what we started off with. And uh, eventually I told her, recruitment is not for me. Uh, you know, uh, I'm into cars. Uh, and I think in 2008, we started uh, Max My Ride. And, you know, the funny thing is that I got no background in terms of publishing. I had no background. I had... Uh, no design experience in terms of a magazine. I did have, you know, Photoshop experience and stuff like that. But I just, one day, I, a guy came to my office and it so happened a guy walked in and he, uh, I think his name was JP, one of my first employees for the magazine. And he walked in and he says, I really like your uh, online, because I had an online magazine, but, you know, I mean, the online magazines wasn't a hit back then, you know. So he walked in and he says to me, uh, do you have any vacancies? And I said, you know what? 
just the other day I was thinking of starting a magazine. What can you do? He says, no, I'm a, I'm a designer. I said, can you design magazines? He said, I can design flyers. I can design all of those things. I said, okay, then you've got some sort of experience. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, I set up a meeting with the uh, uh, Paul. Yeah. And uh, the printer at the time. And uh, I said, let me go see what it's all about. What, how do they want the print? How do they want the, you know, all the artwork? Um, because I don't even have a clue, but I just know that I've got this big idea on a start this magazine and, uh, you know, and we've got some obviously funding from, uh, you know, our other company. And then, um, I just decided, okay, cool, let's go uh, start it. So I took him along, went to Palm Media, walked in there, set up a meeting with uh, one of the big managers. And they said, uh, you know, they called one of the production guys in and then they told us exactly what to do, how they want the format. Uh, my designer at the time, he says, cool, uh, he sort of knows. So let's go back, let's try it. I didn't even have a PC. I went out, bought a PC, what he wanted. He, he told me, okay, like, this is the, <laughs> this is the <laughs> specification. Right? So I said, cool, let's go shop for it. We actually built a PC. Right? <laughs> I said, okay, that's right. Then when we started out, we didn't even know about InDesign. And that's how you were supposed to do it. Oh, we were shit. The whole thing in Photoshop. Photoshop. The whole thing in Photoshop. And then we actually, I think the first, well, I think the first whole year, or year or two, we were doing Photoshop, but then we started uh, taking the Photoshop JPEGs, putting it into the pagination of uh, InDesign. Mm. And then, uh, you know, we, we gave it to them like that to print. And I mean, the guys were printing, then we had to get our, uh, you know, our photography right. We had to make sure the lighting is right. I went and bought one of those big, um, what do you call those things now? Um, it was those reflectors. Yeah. Right? Just to, yeah. So I got one of those reflectors and um, I said, cool. Uh, you know, let, let's start this magazine. And then we did our uh, dummy copy, uh, showed them our dummy copy. They liked the dummy copy showed a few people. I think I ran that dummy copy for about like maybe three, uh, three months just going, and going around showing people. Uh, then I set up a meeting with a few, uh, you know, companies uh, whereby, you know, I put up a screen, I showed them, right, cool, guys, we have this uh, crazy idea, we want to start this magazine, how many guys are going to like advertise with us? And we had a few guys that said, they're cool, we'll jump on board, gave them some good rates. And that's how the old magazine started. We carried on, you know, I mean, it was tough. You know, you got to find the right stuff. Magazines, you don't even know. Magazines are it. hard business, eh? Hey? It People is. People don't understand it how, how hard that's it, it is. That's it. They don't understand it because they don't understand what goes behind the scenes. You know, I mean, especially with setting up of uh, shoots. I mean, you know that. I mean, the guys would say, ah, oh, sorry, I can't make it. You know. Uh, no, they found you on the, the day. Way and then you've yeah, got and then we, all your shit out. You've made up everything. And then they're like, no, we just, we can't. And they don't even give you a good explanation. It's like, nah, nah I, it was a cloud outside. So we're not coming, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm all the way out in uh, maybe like, uh, you know, uh, Boxburg, drove all the way out there, six o'clock in the morning, waiting for him so, so that we could get the sun, uh, mm. the perfect sun. And my, my and worst... Like, my worst, sorry, I'm interrupting. My worst ads. Oh, dude, I hated ads so much because to design. No, it's not just the yeah, design and get guys back to sign off and get it done. And you've got this deadline. I mean, literally, it's like the week before you send to print, you don't sleep. It's like you, no. everything, because if, every month, you do the magazine, you go, well, next month, everything will be in two weeks before time. But if you, and I think, I think Annie and I spoke about this as well. If you take your time from your magazine and when your magazine hits your shelf, and then when you have to start on the next one and the amount of shoots you have to do in articles and writing and all this type of stuff, there's no day off. There was never a day off. There's never like, you, you, you finish the magazine. I, I, I remember I used to give myself one day. Then the mag goes to print the next day. doesn't matter what day it is. Fuck that. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to calm myself down because I know the day after that, I have to go like mad again. 
you know, and it starts all over again. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a story, a little story. And it's, uh, you know, I don't know what you're going to make of it. But so it, it so happened that uh, one day, uh, one of my uh, designers decided, ah, you know, he's not going to come to work. Like, you know, you know and he, oh, he's not coming back, you know. So uh, because we were working like late hours to try and put mm -hmm. this magazine. But at the end of the day, we were uh, doing the magazine through Photoshop, which was difficult. You know, I mean, we didn't know that, okay, right, cool, you needed to do, you know, uh, do the whole magazine in InDesign. Up until I employed, um, I think his name was Kyle. Uh, he's actually now part of uh, Bike SA. Oh, he yeah. does the design for Kyle, and I don't know if you know him, right? Uh, but he worked for me for a short stint. Um, and um, he, he taught us and he said, okay, cool. You know, you're not going to actually... Uh, need me once you learn how to do this, you know? Uh, and he said, he, and he said that you can do this whole magazine in, in InDesign. I said, we, you know, we, we didn't know that. We were just designing the whole thing in Photoshop and then, you know, trying to, you know, align the, the writing and, you know, all of those things. I mean, in InDesign, it does everything for you, you yeah. know? I mean, it's... To a point. It's like a, to, to, to a point. Yeah. I mean, like the... Because uh, what a lot, the problem we found with InDesign is it adds in spaces and puts them in the wrong places, and you can't do proper. You couldn't do proper spell check, but it's it's still an education that goes into it, you know. Especially if yeah. you if you got a little bit of Photoshop, it's like look, I, I I've dealt with a lot of software in my life, and I always say that if you understand the basis of any design software, you can do any design software after that. But it's yeah. the tricks and the trades and stuff that goes and the stuff that saves you time that you don't know. It takes years, you know, to get into it. So anyway, long story short, uh, he didn't come. He bailed and only had one designer at that time. I think this was one of the first years uh, of our, uh, you know, magazine. And uh, lucky I had uh, Photoshop and I'm uh, self-taught in Photoshop, right? Uh, you know, I just a few years before my magazine, I just learned, uh, you know, Photoshop. So whatever I had, I applied. I mean, I was, you know, I can put things together. But uh, now I have to put this whole magazine together by myself. Plus, uh, because at that time I was doing some writing. Now I also have to write and I've got to put this magazine together. At one point, I told all my staff, because I mean, it's my staff, they got families, you know, uh, I told them, I think uh, even uh, Stefan, uh, you know, Stefan that you uh, yeah. interviewed, uh, Kotzer, he's with Speed Hunters now, um, you know, right? So he worked for me at one point as well, uh, you know, and uh, he was working for me, at, I think, at that time. And uh, him, uh, my sales guys, and, um, you know, I think it, another writer, and I, I told them, no, I mean, you go, guys. And I'll continue. Um, I think I only I, I worked. My wife went uh, because we worked in the same building. So she had a recruitment on one side, and I had a, a magazine. And she uh, went out, bought me some KFC, came and left it. And she said, uh, "You know, what time are you going to come back?" I said, "I don't know. When I'm done." She came back. The, the staff, all of them, came early in the morning, and they still got me there. Yeah, and I never went home. Right. I never went home. I was sitting there. I worked right through, pushed out. And then I still uh, remember only 12 o'clock uh, in that, uh, you know, midday was I only done with that magazine. Mm -hmm. So I never went home for, so my wife actually brought my uh, toothbrush and toothpaste uh, <laughs> to the uh, office. You we know? had many so nights was, like that. Uh, many yeah, nights. Was, I Especially when, when I started working with like US and you're waiting for articles and if everything in and your timelines are out and like I said, all design files and, and you're trying to get stuff out and trying to get stuff approved. I mean, I, I, I ran that mag for 14 years, but I, I think it added like 20 years. Uh, you see all the wrinkles? That's that's SA Hot Rods, bro. That's all SA Hot Rods. Um, but, but now... Dude, I mean, so when when did you when did you stop on, on Max Mara? Uh 
when was it? Uh, I think it was in around about uh, 20, 2015, 2016, around about there. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, we just, uh, you know, I just uh, stopped it. I mean, I didn't want to sell it to anyone. I just didn't. I just uh, stopped it, you know. Um, and I said, because I mean, that's the name that I I created, you know. Um, with, when we, when I created that name, I thought of like Pump My Ride, and then I thought of another name, and then it eventually became Max My Ride, uh, because uh, my back in the day when I was still in school, I had a dog named Max, and uh, I, I just liked the name Max. That's why you'll see in my our recruitment company is called Max Recruitment. <laughs> our, my ma- magazine is Max My Ride. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then I just stopped there and then I uh, obviously I quickly transitioned because I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, magazines started taking its turn and uh, maybe not, uh, I'd suppose, in 2016, but you could see it happening. Uh, you know, you could see that magazines were uh, I slowly saw, decline. I saw the writing on the wall when the US canned, what was it like? There was Turbo times. Mag. Ah, all of them, all of them. One day, yeah. Max, uh, Max Power UK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Street Rider, all those. Every major car mag got cut in a day, and I remember I was at home, and I actually said, I think I sent a message to Annie and them, and I went fuck, because that meant that to me, what what people don't understand, to me that day meant that marketing lost the faith in print does that make sense because the, the look the, that's this that's that's the message that came out then is that market uh, we i i love print so today i love magazines i mean i, I was uh, me. that, I, I i do i love magazines and when i see them and i can still pick them up i do um and i mean any of them are still doing a great job with speed and sound and i, I would support them to the death because I still believe we need a mag like that on the shelf because it's got that heritage and everything's still part of them and I, I know they're fighting because I know there's there's issue with print uh, as in paper issues and all this type of stuff because you know and I, I think they're great and they, they 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 need to keep going as much as they can and we need all need to support them but I, I, I from my side it's like you, you, you start getting to a point where you're not doing a magazine because you're getting paid. You're kind of spending money to make everybody else happy. Does that make sense? And it does. You, you, you're is, digging a hole the whole time and you can't, you, and you, you, you're not you're getting fighting a losing battle. Mm-hmm. You're fighting a losing battle. You know, that's what it is. And I mean, that's why, uh, I mean, I, I didn't want to, I mean, what was going to eventually happen was that we're going to take money from one company to fund the other company. Right. I mean, you can't do that. I mean, it's not going to make sense. Mm. So uh, eventually I said, no, I mean, when, when those magazines closed down uh, in, uh, in the States and in the UK and all of that, uh, the thing is why it happened sooner there is that because they um, online, I mean, even in the uh, internet, uh, Wi-Fi was so easily uh, accessible compared to what we, I mean, we only got fiber like now recently. Yeah. You know, I mean, they had five already. So for them, uh, I mean, things transition very, very quickly. Uh, so, I mean, that's why I didn't, because I mean, when those magazines closed, I think some of them even closed in 2013, 2014. So at that time, I said, no, we still got a few more years. Uh, I mean, because uh, we don't even have fiber yet. You know, at that time, we didn't have fiber. I mean, they were still busy thinking about it and putting it into play. So. I just decided, uh, let's carry on a bit. And then, you know, things, they started uh, declining. And then, I don't know, some people just, uh, you know, started, uh, even the uh, the retailers, you know, they'll give you crap. Uh, I don't want to put the magazine on the shelf or that I try to make, we, we want to make more shelf space. So we're going to drop you yeah. and put in more ice cream or yeah. some other shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, those magazines always took the, you know, the, the, the prime spot. Mm. I mean, those magazines were selling in high spots. I mean, car magazine, all those magazines, you know. I mean, for an aftermarket magazine, we were like fighting like, a, you know, for that space. And, uh, you know, eventually I said, ah, you know what, 
uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's transition and see what we can do with. Uh, then I started Boost Media, you know, uh, social media marketing, doing what people were, uh, other people were doing, you know. And then that took off. Uh, that took off up until. Uh, we need to have a talk about that because what I'm launching at the moment is going to help, will help you quite a bit with the, the Boost Media thing. Um, but now, now with Boost Media, now how did you get to doing one of the biggest shows in the country? How did that happen? So, well, like I said, like so, Boost Media was doing well up until the point of COVID. Uh, you know, uh, that's when people started tightening their belts and they said, "We we still had some business, but it wasn't like what it was." Uh, you know, it wasn't fireworks. Um, and uh, I mean, with our recruitment company, uh, people stopped recruiting, uh, you know, so uh, just for that short uh, period. Okay, now everything has, uh, you know, it's increased and, you know, it's, things are looking good. But at that point in 2020, uh, I was chatting to a mate of mine and uh, he told me, yo, the automotive industry uh, you know, especially his business, um, you know, it's, it's taken a knock. I mean, you know, they weren't open and, you know, uh, they need to get out there. You know, they need people to, to know about their business. Uh, what can, like, you know, what can they do type of thing, you know? So I said, yeah, you can use social media, you know? The thing is with social media, people don't understand how it works. You know, I mean, we are part of it, but uh, you know, they just don't understand how it works. People feel that, okay, I can go create my own page. I can just put on ads. I can get someone to design my ads for me. You know, it's more than that. It's, you know, you got to get your right target audience. You got to know how to market. Uh, there's, uh, you know, people there's a don't, lot that happens. People don't understand. You can do a post and you can get a million Two million reach on it, which is phenomenal, and not sell a fucking thing. Okay, you know why? Numbers, numbers, reach and numbers does not equivalent to sales. The ratios are very low, and because they don't know how to engage directly in some product, that's true. the problem. True, because yeah, because they 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 reach is great. I mean, I know um, someone just the other day posted, but uh, you know. I'm an influencer and my reach is, uh, uh, you know, great, but nobody's liking my stuff. Nobody's like sharing my stuff. Nobody's, uh, you know, taking me serious. You know, the reason is that your reach is great, but all those people that you're reaching are not the right people that you actually need. To, you're hitting the wrong uh, mark. target. Mm -hmm. But you look hit, that you're hitting. We, we keep saying you know? that now. Um, if you go check the podcast that came out, um, now with Alex, we, we talk about how reach means nothing because we did the podcast where he talks about how to gain sponsorship and we talk about your reach. Yeah, doesn't now that, yeah. Oh, you got to watch the it. That, you got to do the same. Go check I'll, out the same winner. I'll, I'll watch the bit because it's uh, quite a long one. <laughs> it is. It, it, it was pla It's one of those where you planned it for 20 minutes, but when he starts talking and he starts going into details, you go, oh, shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. but it's it was really interesting. Yeah, I, and I need to I need to go through most of it because I mean that's that's also whether it's for for race teams or whatever sponsorship. But I mean whether you're running a show, it's also sponsorship, you know. So you gotta yeah, but it, uh, you gotta listen to it. The yeah. bottom the bottom line comes down to it's about engagement. Okay, it's about yeah. how do you sell a product? You can't get I, could, I, I this this thing where people sit and go, well, I want to sponsor because I reached. 50,000 people or a million people or 2 million people, but you're dealing with brands that have a base of 50 million, you know, they want you to engage. They want to sell your, your, your proposal and everything you do needs to be based on selling. I mean, that, that's kind of the point at the end of the day, when you get it, when you get a brand, it's not to, you're not a, how can I put it? You know, we, we, we said, we, we were talking about how it's changed over the years. In the years, it's just about having your brand on something. It's not. Now it's about engaging and selling, promoting the product and showing how good it is and all that type of stuff. Um, I mean, and I think that's going to throw guys for a loop. Eh? 
no, now, now you've got to fight also. Uh, so if you approach a company, right? So now what they do is quantify whether uh, giving you the money or taking that same money and spending it on social media is good. So now you've got to fight with social media. Yeah. Right, to try and get your message and across. that's the shit that so, you're gonna you wow. want to use to get to them to help them <laughs> <laughs> you know you, you get what i'm saying you know, but the thing is uh, now you've got to use all that uh you know now you've got to tell the sponsor how you are going to use uh, their money to obviously uh, also get them more uh reach you know, whether it's through social media, whether it's through uh, videos, whether it's w- through whatever. And I, I mean, you've got, you've got to be realistic. I mean, you can't go there and start shooting them figures of, uh, you know, ridiculous figures. You can't do that, uh, you know. But did you, did, sorry, guys, we had a massive network malfunction there, but we're back. Um, did you at least get time to refresh your drink, my friend? Uh, I didn't because I'm still, uh, I just have a little bit, yeah. I think I was talking too much. <laughs> but but yeah yeah and then we were talking about uh idol autofest and how yeah. that uh, yeah, so, came about so after so, this massive technical difficulty okay well we talk about you know auto idol fest and how did you get into that one now how did that get started yeah so like i was saying so when i uh, chatted to my buddy in 2020 and uh he said you know things were a bit bleak for them so I just started thinking and I said, you know, I, you know, the thing is, I always wanted to host an automotive show, you know, and uh, like, a, like a proper automotive show. I mean, we've been um, at Castrol. Castrol was one of my best shows. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I love that show, you know. Uh, I mean, Graham put on a, an awesome show. Uh, I mean, and, and you know what? Some of it, I, I actually helped him behind the scenes in terms of, you know, all those... Uh, those car clubs that were on the mezzanine level on the top, mm. all right? Mm. Uh, and then, you know, I helped him with all of that, put those cars together, get those car clubs together, um, you know? Uh, and I actually used to have my own meetings with the uh, car club guys uh, prior to the show. And all for no cost, because, I mean, it was passion. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, I mean, with the magazine, we sort of had like a like a barter deal type of thing, you know? Uh, Give me space. Uh, let's do something. Uh, and I mean, it, it was awesome, you know. Um, and I, I love that show. And from then, I don't think that I saw another show that that could be that type of show, uh, you know. Uh, so I said, let's try something. But now there's no uh, dome anymore. So and I mean, the cost to rent out those uh, facilities, it's, it's no, crazy. So. I mean, you're not going to get a, an exhibitor that's going to come and uh, pay you uh, 60K or 70K for uh, a small little oh, uh, stand. The dome and stuff know? is like a bar. Two, what's a two, three bar to, to rent it for a long weekend? Because yeah, people forget, point. Yeah, you, you're not just paying for the days that you're exhibiting. You're paying for days when guys are setting up and breaking down as well. You know, all those costs. You know, just, just, like, just like the magazine. People don't understand these things. You know, they don't understand what it went into creating a magazine. You don't understand what it goes, you know, really goes on in creating a show. You think that, okay, cool. Uh, you know, we, ah, the guys are just going to put it on maybe a month before they plan this and then just call a few exhibitors and then it happens. It doesn't happen like that. You know, I mean, yeah. this has been <laughs> for like, like years. I mean, uh, okay, like with, with Idle Autoface, I mean, I had to go and find the right venue, number one. And then, uh, look, when we plan these events, we don't just go to a venue and say, right, we're going to come to your venue and we're going to ho- have this event. Cool. And they're going to be, okay, yeah, no, cool. Come and use our facility, uh, pay us this much and, and do your thing. No, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I mean, the guy, you got to do jock. Yeah, look, I don't know in Cape Town how it works, but uh, I know here in Johannesburg, uh, you know, you've got to go to jock, sit in those meetings. You've got to, uh, I mean, that's health and safety. Uh, you know, you got to get it approved. I had to zone that parking lot. I mean, the parking lot is not zoned for a car show. I mean, if somebody got hurt in my car show, you know, I, I had to have public liability. You know, then these are the things that a lot of the guys today are hosting shows and they, you know, they, they, they don't do these things. I mean, you, we, we've got to 
Well, and that's because, why it's because you're in a public. It's because you're in a public space. That you know, guys forget that the rules are different whether when you're having a show at a, at a drag strip or racetrack compared to having it in a shopping mall. Because you're in a shopping Absolutely. mall. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you're in a shopping mall. There's kids around. There's, there's, it's a family uh, mm. mall, and you can't tell people. Uh, I mean, look, I was. Our show, we, we had quite a bit of uh, kids. I mean, we had a lot of uh, families coming through, you know. Uh, so the thing is, I mean, all these guys that host, like some of these shows, they just go out there, check a venue. And, you know, some of these venues don't even bother. They don't even ask them for, uh, you know, do you have your public library? Do you, like with the Mall of Africa, you know, I mean, they were like, uh, you know, uh, on point, they were like, you know, uh, saying, guys, you need to have this, you better have that. And, you know, that's a good thing you know we have all of that in place i mean we're not uh, like a mickey mouse uh, show you know what i'm saying uh, and people don't realize that you need to get these things i mean because you're dealing with sponsors you're dealing with exhibitors you're dealing with, those are companies they, those yeah. companies even have their own public liabilities they have their own but you're dealing uh, with you know, people's they, safety you know i mean that's I, the thing. I, i've been at shows where shit's gone wrong in a bad way I've been in motor shows yeah. on rugby fields where cars have exploded, you know, you and see, people so, lost arms and shit. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, 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 it's, it's hectic. And then, I mean, you don't want to go down that road because once that happens, then you're, that one show, it's tarnished, yeah. right? Uh, if that happens. So you don't want to go down that road. So you'd rather go and spend that money. I mean, I spent a lot of money for the show. Uh, there was a lot of money that was spent for the show. Uh, you know, to make sure, uh, I mean, there's some uh, parts of that uh, outdoor uh, parking lot that I put fence in just because I felt that if a kid or if one of the exhibitors puts a chair, uh, you know, too close to the edge of the, you know, the barrier wall, uh, they could jump and, you know, go over. Yeah. So I went and I, I went and put uh, the two meter high fence, in, uh, you know, uh, for that, uh, uh, you know. So just but, because, I mean, at the end of the day, when you host uh, a show, I mean, uh, well, I, when I host the show, safety is number one. And, that's uh, you know, I mean, yeah, so safety is number one. And uh, so that's why, you know, when we uh, approached uh, the, the mall and I said, listen, this is what, I, you know, I want to do uh, to promote the automotive industry. Uh, you know, I want to promote the automotive industry. Um, what What's it going to cost? Uh, you know, and then they gave us, a, you know, uh, they, they chatted to us and then they, they told us, listen, this is what's needed. Uh, you know, this is what you're going to need to, uh, you know, uh, pay for, you know, public liability, this, that, whatever it is, you know, uh, and the venue and that sort of thing. Uh, and I mean, they, they also, they, you know, we did marketing through the mall, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the mall had, you know, their own uh, displays everywhere and that for, uh, you know, Idle Auto Fest. Um, but, you know, essentially, that's what we wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do, uh, you know, to promote the automotive. It was more to reconnect the automotive industry after COVID. But you did that. I mean, COVID. And you, you achieved that, my friend. You Thank achieved you. that. You got the fire back up and, and you, you lit the fire back in the guys in Joburg. I mean, you, you, you put a, you create an event and you put it on the map. And congratulations, man. You did well. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And you know, when I chatted to you, right, um, and and you came and you said, "Cool." And I mean, you you already had the gist of it uh, at that point. You know, you knew about the show. I mean, I, you know what, I chatted to you some time back. I think it was in 2020. I still got that message on my phone, and I phoned you. And I, uh, well, well, I sent you a message, and then I phoned you, and I told you, uh, you know. I want you to come down to uh, Johannesburg for a show that I'm busy with. I didn't even know the name at, at that point. Um, and then, uh, you know, you told me, you know, uh, right, cool, sounds interesting. But I think in your head, you must say, ah, not another guy, you know, that's uh, telling me about the show and this and that or whatever. But you know what? That, that's what between you and me. Okay. I, look, I, I get approached a lot for guys to, to get involved. It sounds like I'm fucking blowing my own horn and that type of stuff. Obviously, because I've, I've been a part of, of an industry for such a long time. And I was pissed at myself because I couldn't get to yours. Um, unfortunately, I had 
way too many commitments going on at the same time and I had too many things rolling out and I was moving house and all this type of shit all at the same time and the, the stars just did not align for me to have everything in place I, I started talking to to everybody to get on but this gets me to where we want to go is you are you doing a next one yes, are you going to do it again yes I am but actually I just had a meeting now the other day, uh, right? Uh, so here's the thing. When after the show, everybody said, go take your break because they actually saw me how tired I was. Right? That last four weeks really took its toll on me. You know, I mean, I, that, that show, because of the rain and the weather, right? I think the, the weather really broke me down, right? Uh, because, uh, so, you know, the things, uh, some of the guys, the exhibitors, knew where I stayed for the weekend, all right? I actually stayed uh, across, uh, there was a, there's a hotel that's across, right? It's right on the top. It's like a, a small little, uh, like a penthouse uh, apartment, mm. right? Which I managed to uh, obviously book for the weekend, uh, just for the show, so that I can keep an eye on that whole uh, area. <laughs> because you can from there. So when I saw the, I'll tell you another thing. I'll tell you another. It was like a joke, right? Yeah. So my health and safety guys, uh, the security. So you can actually see them now walking around, uh, you know, in the night. So I, one, so I had the the supervisor's number, and I I phoned him up. I think this was about twelve o'clock. I never slept the first night because that Friday night was like quite hectic. The rain, mm. the I could just see those gazebos like you know like flying. And I said, if I have to go back downstairs, run across the road, and go and check this place out again to make sure those gazebos are fine. I only slept at three in the morning. Woke up at uh, uh, what five or six uh, to get back to the show uh, for the next morning. You know. So, but anyway, I I ch uh, checked the guys out at about twelve o'clock. And I, I checked, okay, there's a guy walking here. So I had to make sure that these guys check out everything. So I picked up the phone, phoned him. I said, uh, sorry, so where are you guys? I, I don't see a security guard anyway. And the guy says, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm here, but I'm in uh, one of the guy's gazebos. And then I said, okay, cool. Can you just walk out a bit so I can see you? So I was like, <laughs> like where, where, where am I? You know, <laughs> but they can't actually <laughs> sit on this ninth floor of this uh, of this hotel that's across the road. Uh, right? But I had to make sure, uh, you know, and that's why, you know, I mean, even the first night, a few of the exhibitors sending me messages. Uh, is the car okay? Is it, because I told them, you know, that's where I am. Yeah. You know, uh, so they say, okay, cool. You're watching over things. So they send me messages, I think 11 or 12 in the, you know, in the night. And I said, is the... Um, you know, wind, is the car cover still on the cars? Can you check? Uh, and I'm checking. So three o'clock I slept. I mean, I was walking around like a zombie on Saturday. And then, uh, okay, Saturday night, I was a bit more at ease. Uh, but I still only slept at about, I think, one, one or two. Uh, had a bit of sleep. So when the guy saw me after the show, uh, you know, and then that Sunday evening, when they told me, and even on Monday, remember, I had still had to be there Monday. Because uh, it, there Break was down. breakdown, and, and yeah, so now I have to go make sure that everybody takes their stuff. Uh, nobody's trying to like you know uh, take somebody else's stuff because that's the time people stuff goes missing is when another exhibitor maybe or someone you know or someone just walks in there, you know. So I have to make sure that everything is a hundred percent. And um, when I chatted to a few guys, they told me you need a month's holiday, you know. I told them, yeah, I'm going to take a month's holiday. And that's what I wanted to do. But then I got back. And uh, I think about a few days after, I think two or three days after, I'm thinking, right, what can we change for the next show? Uh, what can we do for the next show? Did uh, you get, um, like, we, we, we call it um, event depression. Um, event, de event depression. So when, when you have, these massive events or massive things that goes out where it's like such a big scale. And obviously and you, you'll know people that's worked in the industry and do, does this shit like on a daily basis. They don't, they, some of them still suffer from. 
it's like a few days after the event, you hit a massive depression because there's like this vacuum that's out of your life. You know? Absolutely. So you, absolutely. it's like you, 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 you get like a few days after and it's like, what the fuck's going on? Because one, yeah, you, yeah, your, yeah. your stress levels for weeks have been running at like 99.9 and now everything, you, and then there's like a, a drop. It's like adrenaline yeah, drop. Then now, you, mm. then now you're just cruising. You yeah. Know? So the thing is, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, no, look, my family, my, 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 my daughter loves cars. My son loves cars. Uh, and I mean, they are like, uh, we, we, come, we need to, uh, you know, she, she's like, uh, you know, she's feeling like a bit depressed, you know, the show is over, you know, and I mean, me as well. I think that happens when you have a good show, when yeah. you have a bad show, you don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Right? So when and you, you avoid show, everything. No, no, no. You avoid everything and everybody, you know, uh, but when you have a good show, then, I mean, you, you look forward to, to chatting to people. Um, I mean, uh, in fact, I'm going to go uh, and pay, uh, you know, uh, a few people uh, like, uh, you know, visits for the next show uh, already, you know, um, they actually told me, you know, come through, come, let's meet, uh, you know, let's chat. Uh, you well, know, I mean, I'm getting people calling me from everywhere to say, uh, how can we get this at our venue type of thing, you know? Um, well, and that's something I actually was sorry, I wanted to say to you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, is... South Africa is taking this trend where our biggest events are happening at shopping malls. And it makes total sense to me because, I mean, SEMA is in Vegas. Vegas has the space. There's not, like we said, the dome is gone. I know there's Nazareth, but hmm, it's Nazareth. Okay. There's not for the type of shows and the level and the quality that you want to do, there's not venues available that's got the space unless you're hitting a big ass shopping mall, you know, that's got the infrastructure in the parking lot. That, you, that's true. The thing is, uh, I mean, a, a shopping mall is a great venue, but it depends on what shopping mall. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of shopping malls that are run down. There's a lot of shopping malls that, uh, you know, the thing is, a shopping mall is not geared for uh, a big expo. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to make that area space. that's given to you. Uh, yeah. yeah, you've got to make that area that's given to you, or that space that's given to you, uh, adapt to a car show, for instance, right? Or for whatever show you want to have, you know? I mean, that's why we had strict instructions. Sorry, that parking lot is not zoned for a, uh, a car show, you know? Mm. Uh, but I told him, uh, but hang on. Uh, cars park there, you know, <laughs> on a daily basis. But no, it's not geared. So we follow the rules and regulations. I yeah. go and I go and get that zone because the last thing you want to do is spend all this money, go and uh, get all these exhibitors, and then you realize uh, tomorrow Jock comes and says, "No, sorry, that uh, uh, parking lot you're not having a show there," you mm -hmm. know, uh, because you uh, zone it, you know. So we have to zone that to make sure that. Health and safety was also happy with that uh, uh, area. You know, I had to put a proper plan together. It doesn't happen overnight. You know these things, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the shopping mall is a, you know, the thing is why I also like the shopping mall. It's a free experience for people. I mean, you can go to a shopping mall. You can walk in there. You can go. The only thing that you're paying for is a parking ticket. All right. Uh, well, the good thing here with the Mall of Africa, uh, they have this uh, admit app. Uh, right, that they're promoting, where the parking is free if you register on that app. Oh, wow. Right? So, yeah, so some of the guys, uh, it worked for them uh, that came to the show, and some of the guys, it didn't. So all you had to do was, uh, you know, register on the app, and then their parking was actually, you know, free. But they've got that, uh, you know, as you enter in, they've got, you know, all the descriptions. So, in fact, that too could have been free for some of the guys, you know. So, but... It's a free experience. You can't, that's why I said, I'm not going to charge people. Uh, it's been tough uh, on, on everybody with COVID. I see a lot of people right now that having shows, whether it's small shows, big shows, they charge in an arm and a leg just to get in, right? Mm. I mean, we got to change and adapt to and the situation. You, you got to look at the market. Petrol's fucking expensive just to get there. You can't kill the guy to try and get in there as well. 
you know? No, it's, then you're going to get the guy to pay, right? You're getting the guy to pay for his fuel. Then you're getting the guy to uh, uh, pay to enter. Uh, then you get in the guy, you must pay for his parking ticket. Then he, then you still want him to spend on those exhibitors that you've got there. Exactly. It's not you want work. him to buy food and you want him to be there the whole day and have drinks and be merry and no, everything. No. So, I mean, I mean, there was a lot of guys, a lot of our exhibitors, even uh, you know, some of our sponsors. They asked me, so tell me, they, they couldn't get their head around as to why I gave it free of charge to spectators. They just couldn't understand it. Because, I mean, everybody, you see, I'm trying to change things up uh, in SA with the, the, the auto scene, you know, mm. uh, and especially with the auto shows and say, guys, you don't have to really pay for that, right? Save your money and come and spend on our exhibitors. That's yeah. what we want, right? Come and exactly. spend on those exhibitors because those exhibitors spent to be here for you, you Is know? It, so come my, and support them. Dude, the amount of events I know that went down because people couldn't afford to go to the event. And then you've got the organizer going, ah, oh, this is the market. And you're like, no, people can't fucking afford to get there. You're charging three, 400 bucks for people to get in. You've got a family because you have to remember the size of your family and all this type of stuff. If it's you, your wife and your two kids, and then you want to take a buddy with and stuff, you're like a grand down, grand and a half down. You haven't got there yet. Yeah. Then you get there, you so, want to buy a hot dog or a t-shirt and this type of stuff. And it just it ruins the experience, man. And, and I, I mean, you, you know, you, I mean, you see, you, I mean, everybody understands it, you know, I mean, it's just that we need to change the whole dynamics of how we do these uh, shows, how to get people to come and see the products of the uh, exhibitors, yeah. uh, how to come to, you know, uh, I mean, visit the mall, uh, you know, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, you know, people actually were happy. We, I mean, we got 19,000, I think it was 19,900 people registered for the show. Right? Dude, that's huge. 19,000 you, you for two days. If you, you are on a third of SEMA, okay? And I know people are, it's a third of SEMA. It's fucking SEMA. Okay, SEMA sits at 70,000 people. Okay, over, a, over two days. Yeah, right. You're so, on a I third. Mean, You're not days. far off, dude. And it's your first event. You can get there. Yeah. So over two two days, first show inaugural, right? Uh, we managed to attract nineteen thousand uh, uh, registrations, right? And obviously, you know, I'm I'm telling you now, the next show is going to be uh, big, right? We're going to have much more people. Uh, we're still going to keep it a two-day show because I think, uh, you you know, have to like you say, you know, yeah, like 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 Sema and that those those shows have. I mean, it's been around year for years. You know, I mean, those shows have its uh, trade supporters. They have its media supporters. The, the, that show is like on a. I mean, it's always been the benchmark. You know, for for many uh, people that's hosting shows and that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's a dream. Look, we'll never end up being. Uh, SEMA because we don't have the market for it. I mean, SEMA's, uh, I mean, in the States, there's a market for that type of show, you know, but what we can do is take our little show, right, grow it for the local guys, you know, right? so that whether it's guys from Cape Town, whether it's guys from Durban, right, come up to, uh, they call it like, you know, uh, Johannesburg, the hub, uh, you know, of um, uh, the economic hub. So, I mean, Get the guys, let them network. That's what we want to do. You know, get them to network. Let the, It's not only about that. It's also about getting the guys to come with their awesome cars. And that's why I invited you. And that's why I wanted you there. Because I know you... I mean, just making me say, feel bad. Okay. <laughs> nah, okay I'll be feel bad now. Look, l listen. At the end of the day, you are the you are Mr. S.A. Hot Rod. Uh, and that's why we wanted... The muscle cars, hot rods, I mean... There's no one else that's uh, you know that that can come out there and and talk about that stuff. You know, I mean. Uh, the, oh, thank you. I mean, you you thank you've you. been there. You know. Yeah. Thank so you. I mean, uh, that's it. We, we we need to start wrapping up because we we're, we're over an hour already, and we said we weren't going to get there, but 2023, I'm there. Okay, I will do the podcast. We're going to chat. I'm going to do the podcast from the stage. 
and I'll do the interview and we're going to make it massive and uh, you'll have all my support. Um, it's, 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 it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going awesome. To be awesome. And then, and that's why I've been, but we're going to chat. We'll chat. Oh, no, 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 wait. To you in- oh, try. Oh, we are going to chat. Trust me. I'm actually yeah, going to, so we, we're going to say goodbye to everybody here and then I'm going to tell um, you something quickly afterwards. So listen, Bru, okay. thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, thanks a lot. Great work, man. Great. Thank great. You. Thanks. thanks if no one, if no thanks one told you, I'm telling you, I wasn't there. I watched all the footage. I looked at all the photos. I mean, you know, with me with Resta Mod, we did the press stuff afterwards. Yes, but yes, um, no. but that, 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 that's quite awesome. That that's quite awesome that you gauged it through the actual uh, you know photos and the media. Because I mean that's what the intention was as well, you know. Mm. But that was awesome. But I want to tell you something now. Uh, I want to thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I, I mean, uh, Resto Mod. Uh, I mean, I, I think you know when we chatted, I, I really liked your ideas. I really liked what you're doing, and I really like your show. Uh, you know, every now and then when I have time, I check out your, uh, you know, your uh, podcast. I check out your your shows on TV. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're doing a, a fantastic job out there, you know, especially with the, like showcasing. I mean, you changed as well. I mean, with SA Hot Rods, you, I mean, you just took a, a you know a different turn, but it worked. You got out a purpose, my you. friend. You got a purpose. Yeah, yeah. but I, I hope it works out well for you. I really yeah. hope it works out well. It does. Yeah. It does. Listen, thank you so much, dude. Okay, it's been thanks, awesome. Joe. Okay, keep well. Cheers. Cheers.